Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. I am back from the meeting in Toronto. I was hoping to kind of plant a tree on top of the temple, but I didn't quite get the temple finished and I had to prepare the trees for the planting. I'll show you what I did to the trees. This is the tree that I was going to plant on the temple, a ficus, an atel ficus. Uh, I pulled it out of the old pot and had a look at the roots and they weren't very good. They weren't very suitable for a root over temple planting. When you look at the temple, one of the most important things is to get the roots to kind of flow around the temple to look like the tree has been growing there for hundreds and hundreds of years on top of the temple. And I, I don't want that look where it looks like the tree was just kind of placed on the temple and, uh, you know, the roots don't conform to the shape of the temple. So this tree had kind of, uh, the trunk came down and then they had two thick roots that divided into a Y. So I ended up cutting off basically the entire root system. I'll show you a picture of uh, what I did. So here's what the, the tree looked like. It had, uh, the trunk came down and then it had roots that looked kind of like this. It had a flare and then they were cut off like that. And you could, and then off of here were a lot of kind of roots that went strange directions. Kind of like that. So it was probably a cutting that was maybe root pruned at one time kind of cut off and then planted again and it had resprouted. So what I ended up doing was I kept the best part of the tree, which was the trunk and this root flare each side. All the rest I couldn't use because I want to plant it on the top of the temple. So I, I took the uh, ratcheting pruners and I cut right through here. So all this was gone. So I just kept the best part of the tree, which was the trunk and that initial root flare. So what'll happen, I hope, is that I will then grow from that, basically a cutting of what I have, is that I'll get roots growing out all the way around. I'll develop those and then eventually these will remain flexible for, you know, at least a year, maybe two. And then I'll plant it over top of the temple. So then all these fine roots can then be arranged and manipulated to fit the, the, the contour of the temple so that, you know, they'll grow wherever I want them. And then as they thicken up, they'll really, really hug the temple and look like they'd been there for, again, hundreds of years. After the root pruning, I planted the cutting quite deep in the pot. So the bottom of the trunk is about here maybe. And it's a deep pot, lots of soil. So those roots should develop well. This tree is being kept cool in the outdoor greenhouse, the glass house uh, for the whole fall. And it's been quite cool out there. So I think now that it's in the plant room, it's warmed up. I've got a good light above it. I think it'll root without any problem. Jay from Blue Jay Bonsai had some large pots he had and he offered to bring them down to the meeting so I could try out the temple in different styles of pots. So thanks very much, Jay. And it was very interesting trying the temple out in the different pots. I'll show you some of those now. Here's the pot that I brought from home, kind of a shallow rectangular with kind of scallop corners. Fairly fancy looking pot. I like it in this pot, except I, I don't really like the color of the pot with the temple. I think the ideal color of the pot would be kind of a gray pot with maybe a green glaze kind of fading down it or dripping down or something like that. Um, so it's kind of a gray green color. I think that would be the ideal pot. Now, this pot would probably look quite nice if it had like a layer of moss on top of the soil. So it's kind of hard to imagine what it would look like with this pot under it. But I, I, I like the pot. It's not bad. Uh, but I think the color just isn't that suitable. 
The next pot is one that Jay brought, an oval-shaped drum pot with the rivets around it. Um, it's it, it looks too much pot for the temple, which is hard to believe because the temple's so large and heavy. But yeah, I, I think it's too deep. I think if it was a shallower oval, maybe half that size and maybe without the rivets. I think the rivets, they don't give you a Cambodian temple feel. It's just not the right kind of pot style for this temple, I think. The last one is the mica pot, the large mica pot. And this one actually looks really good. And I think because, you know, it is an oval, but it, it's shallower and it has a thick lip, which kind of masks masks the depth of the pot. It's got tall feet, which kind of elevates it a bit. It, it really separates the pot from the tabletop. Uh, almost, yeah, almost seems to highlight the temple quite nicely. Uh, so this would probably be a really good pot. The mica pot is also very light uh, compared to like a, a an equal cl size clay pot. So that's another advantage of the mica pot is the lightness and the temple is very heavy. The other advantage is that if I wanted to, I could uh, put screws up from the bottom of the mica pot into the temple to secure it into the pot. So then you could just transport transport the whole planting by lifting it from the mica pot. It's not going to tip over or anything, even though I don't think it ever would. But uh, yeah, it would make it a little safer for transporting. So yeah, this is, uh, and I think the color is better than the first pot because it's a darker brown. It's almost, it, it doesn't have that reddish brown color to it. It's more of a walnut color and I think it suits it better. It's kind of dark and yeah, really highlights the temple. So yeah, if, uh, you know, if Jay will sell me the pot, this might be the pot it goes in. Uh, or the other options is I could try making my own cement pot for it. So it would be probably a rectangular pot and the edges of the pot would be like, like the temple made of uh, concrete bricks and maybe a fancy top to the fence, sort of like a fence around the temple and maybe a cement walkway going into the front entrance. You know, you could do things like that. So, yeah, there's a few possibilities, but uh, I'm sure liking the mica pot as the number one choice uh, so far. Trying out the temple in the different styles and shapes of pots kind of gave me a feel for what the final pot might look like in this planting. I also experimented around with different positions of the tree on the temple, and I think I found a good position for the, the largest tree. I'm going to plant a few more smaller ones in the planting too. I'll show you the pictures of trying the tree out in some different locations. I brought two trees with me to the meeting, a smaller Natal ficus and a larger one. And I was trying them out. You can see me placing them around the temple here, trying out different ideas. So eventually I uh, we kind of all settled on this look with the main tree kind of growing behind the temple and beside it. And I think it looks really good. The tree almost follows the contours of the temple. The tree's tall. It reminds me of the kapok trees that grow near the temple or karpok trees. And then I can put the smaller one kind of on the other side. I would like three trees eventually, an odd number. So maybe, you know, another medium size on the left-hand side and then maybe a smaller one in the front, kind of growing over the entrance way, but not too tall that it obscures uh, the temple. So yeah, um, I'm going to, uh, when I prune the largest tree, I'm going to plant some cuttings. So I have lots of cuttings to try out on the temple. Here's a shot of Mike's Natal ficus in front of the temple. I just wanted to see what it would look like, sort of like a a jungle atmosphere where you're looking through the trees at the temple. This is a, you know, quite a mature Natal ficus and you can see all the fruit on it. It's really amazing and how small the leaf, the leaf size can get, which is pretty amazing too. You can see all the aerial roots growing down the trunk, which is 
really nice. That's kind of the look I want. You can imagine all those aerial roots growing around the temple. It would just look oh, really nice. And I'm hoping that the temple gets, you know, natural moss on it someday and uh, algae and lichen and just looks fantastic. So these are things I'm hoping to look forward to in the future. I did some pruning of the Natal ficus at the meeting. I pruned off all the lower branches so you could get a clear view of the root base before I pruned the roots. I, uh, I pruned off all the aerial roots also. They were uh, all over the place, uh, kind of sticking out 90 degrees from the trunk. So I pruned those off and I'll regrow new aerial roots uh, once the tree is planted on the temple. At the Toronto meeting, I was also given some gifts by a very kind person, uh, some really beautiful pots. I'll show you each pot one at a time and we'll have a look at them. Here's a look at the first pot and this pot is an Ashley Keller pot. You can see name and symbol there. Uh, she was making these pots in London, Ontario, Canada. Really nice pots. So I'm very happy to have an Ashley Keller pot in my collection. Pot number two is a Japanese pot. There's a symbol on the bottom of it there. Uh, one that has sort of a wavy lip and a textured inside to it. Beautiful color pot, really nicely made. Yeah, nice. The next two pots are made in the United Kingdom. I think it says Wall Sale Studio Ceramics on it. Beautiful textured pots, just works of art. There's another one. Has a different texture. Yeah, beautiful little pots. The next pot is a Japanese pot, a Shuho pot. There's the maker's stamp on the bottom. A beautiful color pot. It's very unusual. It's sort of a, what is it? Like a marble. Yeah, I guess like marble. And it's got kind of a yellowish tan tinge in it. Really, really cool. And beautiful feet on it too. I like those feet. The next pot is a tall cascade pot. Um, there is a maker stamp on the bottom. I'm not sure if that's Chinese or Japanese. There. Yeah, really nice. Nice to have a tall pot like that. I don't have one like that, so I'm sure I'll find a tree that will fit this perfectly. Nice pot. The next three pots are all from Aaron in the United Kingdom. And this is a really beautiful pot. The coloring on it is fantastic. Yeah, really, really nice. So that's number one of the Aaron pots. Number two is an orange pot. And again, really beautiful glazing on it. Lovely pot. Pot number three from Aaron. There's the maker stamp on the inside here. I don't know if you can see it in there. Um, this is Aaron. Yeah, a kind of a crackle glaze with a, a, a another glaze put over it. Very interesting colors, very pale. Yeah, quite a pot, nice. The next pot I think is a Japanese pot. It's really beautiful. I just love the shape of it. Uh, there is a maker stamp on the bottom here. Yeah, just a, a beautiful little pot. Gorgeous. The next pot is by Mark Berenbrinker from Germany. And it's really, really nice. Beautiful feet. It's got a glaze on it that's ah, very subtle. So you can see the clay color and then it has like a, almost like a rough black, black kind of glaze or maybe it's just an oxide on it. Really nice, uh, made in 2016. There's a stamp. Yeah, that's a real treasure too. Really like that. Mark Berenbrinker. 
yeah, just a wonderful pot, that one. The next pot is a bijet. There's a stamp on the bottom. This pot has the most beautiful patina on it. It's got like a green oxide or something. I don't know if that's just from years of use, but it's just beautiful. I, I can't believe the patina on it. It just, yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. Beautiful pot, just beautiful. The next pot is by someone you probably will recognize, Sarah Rayner from the United States. Uh, and again, just a fantastic pot. All kinds of texture on it. There's the SR here. Yeah, beautiful pot. Can't wait to get a tree in that. Thank you very, very much for those pots. Each one is just an individual work of art. And I can't wait to get a tree planted in them. I do have one more pot that was given to me by a friend of Blue Jay Bonsai. And he brought it in for me. And I'll show you that next. Here's a look at that pot that Jay brought in for me. It's that red drum style pot. A very, very large pot. Going to be awesome to get that planted also. Underneath that is the mica pot that Jay has lent me for my temple planting. On my Natal ficus here, you can see all the figs that are developing all over the plant, which is kind of cool. Not only did I get lots of pots that night, the same person brought me in a Japanese maple cutting. It's an Irokawa cutting. So it's in here. I'm keeping it above freezing but keeping it cool. So this will go down in the basement. They also brought me in some Thuja seedlings right here. So I'll be using those in my avatar grove. So just, yeah, nice to get this Japanese maple. There was actually two of them in there. Very cool, so thank you very much. At the Toronto Bonsai Society's meeting, I made a lot of progress on the temple planting. I tried out different pots for it, kind of give me an idea of what I want. I tried the tree out in several places and tried placing some other trees around it. And it gives me a lot of good ideas for continuing this planting in the, into the future. So that's it for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.